Good evening. I would like to welcome you to this Wednesday night Bible study. Let me introduce myself first. I am Pastor Dale Jensen of Praise Tabernacle in Rochester, Minnesota, located at 306 21st Southwest. Tonight I want to speak on the New Covenant. To make it easier for you to understand the Bible, it is basically broken down from the Old Covenant, which we know as the Old Testament, and the New Testament, which we know as the covenant of the New Testament. And I want to show you in the book of Revelation that Revelation is actually a revelation of the New Covenant. And here we want to go to the book of Revelations, chapter 5 and verse 1 tonight. And it says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. So there are three things you must know about Revelation. And I want to share this with you tonight. First, you must know that it is a covenant book. It goes right along with all the rest of the New Testament. And this is just the new covenant that is being proclaimed and brought forth through the book of Revelation. The second thing you need to know is the time period... <clears throat> It is referring to. And a third thing you need to know is that it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. With these three things in mind, we're going to go to Revelations chapter 1 and verse 1. Here it tells you that the first it says is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The whole book of Revelation is, is about the revelation of of our Lord and Savior, of him bringing in the new covenant. It says, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants, or unto his people, things which must shortly come to pass. So you notice the time period of the book of Revelation. Here the apostle John says to unto the people that this must shortly come to pass. So after the time of the writing of the book of Revelation, this, what is spoken in Revelation, came to pass. Also, what else you need to know? And he said, he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. You notice the book was sealed with seven seals. The seven seals show it was a testament or a covenant. This was known in all the ancient world when the letter was sealed with seven seals it meant that there was a co it was a covenant and it needed to be open. So what John is showing us is that this is the new covenant that has been sealed with seven seals. And a symbol of the promise also of a future kingdom. That's what was within this testament was a future kingdom. And you will notice it was written on front and back as were the Ten Commandments. You will find this in the book of Exodus, chapter 32 and verse 15. It says there were two tablets were written on both sides, talking about the Ten Commandments. This covenant was also written on both sides, and that shows you the Old Covenant and the New Covenant were sealed on both sides. And the, uh, the Bible says that they put the law of the covenant, of the Old Covenant, were put in the Ark of the Covenant. And you will find this in Exodus chapter 25, verse 16. For those that are taking notes, I just want to give you the verses. I will not be going to all of them. But those that like to study the word of the Lord, I suggest that you have your notebook with you or else replay this tape again as you study the word of the Lord. But this is found in that is placed in the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant, in Exodus 25, 16, and verse 21. Also in the book of Exodus, chapter 40, and verse 20. It is also found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, and verse 2. Now let's go to Revelation, chapter 1, and verse 3. This verse here shows you that he is speaking of the covenant or the new covenant that was to be brought to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. It shows that it was a covenant. It says, Blessed is he that readeth 
and they that hear the words of this prophecy or this covenant and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. You notice again, the writer John is saying that the time is at hand or shortly to come to pass. As I told you, that's one of the three things you must remember when you read the book of Revelation. John says it's shortly to come to pass and it's the revelation of Jesus Christ and it is the new covenant. So let's continue on tonight. And I just want to give you a short preview of chapters 2 and 3 of Revelations were written to the church as messages sent to them, but it all is concerning the covenant that they have entered into. Now, in verse 7, the seventh thing, the vision is the throne vision in chapter 4 of one sitting on the throne. You will also find this in the book of Ezekiel where it shows that there is one sitting upon the throne. And by understanding that the book, the book of Revelation is about the revelation of Jesus Christ, we know who that one that is sitting on the throne, throne is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So all this brings us up to the next chapter. And actually, it's the book is nothing less than the testament of the resurrection and ascension of Christ the new covenant to those that want to read in the old testament i will not be reading it but you can go there in ezekiel chapter 2 verse 3 to 10 is speaking of the very same thing so let's continue on let's go to verse 2 of revelations chapter 5 and it says and i saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open up the book now that we know it is the new covenant, here the angel is talking to John, who is able to open this book of the new covenant. Verse 3 said, There was no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. So there was no one found. That was able to. And it says, And I wept much. John is saying he wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. But Christ became the mediator of a better and of the new covenant. So he is the author of our faith and our salvation. The new covenant is offered by the one sitting on the throne which we know is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one that brought forth the new covenant. Let's go to verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And this is talking about Christ, the conqueror. He is one of the root of Judah, of the tribe of Judah, and the root of David, and he has prevailed to open the book. Now let's go to verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns, which represent power, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. The eyes represent the seeing. It's the same as in verse 5. It says, called a lamb because of his work. He was a sacrifice. And this is the center of all of our history. Jesus was not called a lamb just because they say he was meek, but it's because he was the sacrificial lamb that was pointed to from the very Old Testament when it was said that the Lord himself would provide a sacrifice. So now let's go to Revelation 13 and verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the land slain from the foundation of the world. So we see this prophesied that Jesus would be the lamb that was slain 
from the very foundation of the world. As I mentioned before, the horns represent power and strength. You will find this in the book of Psalms 75 and verse 10. The seven spirits you will read about in Zechariah 6 and verse eyes. The eyes means that they're able to see. You notice in the Old Te- or in the book of Revelation, every time he heard a voice, he heard first and then he turned to see. That is seven times in the book of Revelation. So this is the order that the Lord was speaking to John. First he would hear and then he would see. Verse 7. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. We know the one that is sitting on the throne. It's the Lamb. It's our Lord Jesus Christ, the one that is sitting there on the throne. And all this is symbolic. So now I want to go to the book of Daniel, chapter 13, excuse me, chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. As I told you, this book of Revelation is about the kingdom and the new covenant. And there is only one that is worthy to own and be the owner of all the new covenant and of the kingdom of God. And that's our Lord Jesus Christ. So now let's go to verse 13. And it said, And I saw in a night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man, who is the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Son of man came with the clouds of heaven, and I came to the age and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. It's talking about the Son of Man being brought before the ancients of days. But I want you to notice in verse fourteen, he is telling him that unto this or unto the Christ is given a kingdom, and it's an everlasting kingdom and it will not be destroyed, it will not fade away. The Old Covenant, yes, faded away because it was only temporal. It was signs and symbols that we would recognize when Christ came. So we began to realize that the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, was temporal until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring in effect the New Covenant. And let's go to verse 14. And there was given him, as talking about Christ, dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, languages should serve him. You notice every kingdom, every nation, every language is going to be there because they have entered in through the new covenant. When Jesus said, I am the door, he's talking about the door into the entrance of the kingdom. And he said, if you come in any other way, you are a thief and a robber. But he said, I am the door. And any man enter by by me, he will come in and sup with me. He says, my sheep know my voice, and they will not follow another. So we begin to see the kingdom belongs to none other than Jesus Christ. And we that are members of the kingdom, we should serve him. His dominion or the dominion of Christ is everlasting. That's a long time, isn't it? Which shall not pass away. It's not going to pass away. And his kingdom that will shall not be destroyed. I'm here to tell you the kingdom of God is here to stay. It was established by our Lord Jesus Christ through his death, burial, and resurrection, bringing forth a new covenant. Because the old covenant yes, was brought forth by Moses, the law, the old covenant. But the new covenant was brought forth by Jesus Christ, who entered into this covenant of grace with his people. The whole Bible is talking about salvation and redemption. And that's what I see in the word of the Lord. It's talking about a time that the Redeemer would come, his people would be redeemed and saved, and written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So it's very important that we understand the book of Revelation, that it is a covenant. It's talking about the covenant that was made by our Lord in Jesus Christ, because he is the only one 
that is able to open up the book. And he's the only one that can write our names in the Lamb's book of life. Because the message of the Bible is salvation through Jesus Christ. That's pretty easy to understand, isn't it? He is the Savior of the world. He said, I have come to seek and to save those which are lost. Jesus Christ is our Savior. His covenant is here, and through his covenant, we are able to enter in and into his kingdom. The Bible tells us how to enter into his kingdom, being born again of the water and of the Spirit, which is baptism by water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, born again of the water and of the Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the mediator of the new covenant. I want to go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24, and then verse 28. And it says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. This was the one-time sacrifice and there is no other sacrifice, animal sacrifice, accepted unto God because Jesus was offered once at the end of the world for the sacrifice and for the forgiveness of many sins. You'll find that in Hebrews 9, verse 26. Now I want to go to verse 28 tonight. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom. You notice it says, wherefore we receiving a we have received a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God exceptionally with reverence and godly fear. We are to serve the Lord with reverence and godly fear because we are the redeemed of the Lord and the blood of Christ is still working today. Now I want to go to John chapter 1 and verse 17. This is what I spoke to you earlier. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. What he's saying, the old law or the old covenant was given by Moses in the Ten Commandments, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And we know the new covenant is a covenant of grace. He says, for grace are you saved and none of your works. So we have definitely entered into a new covenant through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why he wants you to understand his first coming and exactly what he did at his first coming. He came to bring salvation and to redeem his people. So we begin to understand, and how did he do it? By the cross where he shed his blood, that you and I may be forgiven. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. So Christ shed his blood at the cross thus fulfilling the plan of God. The Bible says in the beginning, in the beginning, what it means is that God had everything planned because God has no beginning and he has no ending. Ending. And from the time, he said in the beginning, his plan began to come forth as we see in his creation and also in the New Testament where his plan was fulfilled through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 8 says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, having one of them harps and golden vials of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And you can look in Psalms 141, verse 2, will tell you this was a time of worship because the Lamb of God overcame and brought forth salvation. So now was a time to rejoice. This is why the, the days that are becoming before us, the days of his resurrection and his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which we know as Palm Sunday, should be celebrated and they should be celebrated rejoicing because God has command when we come together for the feast days that we are to come together not weeping or mourning or in sorrow, but we come rejoicing. And at this time of his resurrection, the church realized that we're redeemed, we're part of his body because we have entered in 
to this covenant that the Lord has showed us that he brought forth through and through the cross and through his death and his resurrection. And it's like an altar of incense. If you notice in the tabernacle, what was the closest to the holiest of holy? The altar of incense. And this means that our incense and our prayers come up before God, just like it is smoke that arises onto the nostrils of our Lord and Savior. To him, it's a very sweet smelling odor, and it's very beautiful in the eyes of him. So what you begin to see here now is the people beginning to worship and thank Jesus because he has brought forth the salvation under the new covenant and thus forth bringing forth the new kingdom. And what they did to celebrate, they sung a new song. When redemption was always brought forth in the Bible, the Bible begins to teach us that they sing a new song. And to those that are taking notes, I want to give you, because there are seven places in the Bible where it speaks of singing a new song. To those that are taking notes, I'm only going to read one of them, but I want to give you all the seven places so you can look them up later, that you realize the new song is always sung when it comes to salvation. Just like when Israel crossed the sea and they were on the other side, they sung the song of redemption. The book of Revelation is talking about a song of redemption, like the song that Moses sang when they crossed the Red Sea. So let's continue on. Verse 9 says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God. You notice he was slain for the redemption of us. And by thy blood, of the blood of Christ, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. The Lord's salvation is for everyone. The Bible said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that who shall ever believeth in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. If one thing Revelation teaches you, all the nations in the language will be there singing the song of the redeemed. And that'll be a great day for us when we get to heaven because then we can say our redemption is completed and we can sing that new song in heaven. So I want to give you a list of the verses tonight. Psalms 33 and verse 3. Then Psalms chapter 40 and verse 3. To those that are taking notes. Psalms 96 verse 1. Psalms 98 verse 1 through 3. Psalms 144 verse 9. Psalms 149, verse 1. Also found in Isaiah 42 and verse 10. I want to go to the Psalms 98 and read verses 1 through 3 to show you this is one of the seven instances that the Bible talks about singing a new song. I don't know if you ever sung in church as we have the song of singing a new song unto the Lord. And this is for the redeemed of the Lord. Just as these people worshiped and sung a new song, we that are redeemed should also sing a new song of worship unto our Lord and King. Psalms 98, verse 1 through 3 says, Sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand or his power and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. The Bible talks about the arm of the Lord being extended to bring victory and to bring salvation. Now let's go to verse 2. It says, The Lord has made known his salvation. His righteousness has he openly shewed in the sight of the heathen. Christ showed openly his salvation, and it was made known to all men. There is probably no place hardly in the world anymore that have not heard about the cross and the sufferings of Christ, and the salvation that is available through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other manner, there is no other sacrifice that God will accept 
outside of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ because he was the lamb. He was in the plan of God from the very foundation of the world to redeem mankind and to bring salvation. This is why, to me, the whole Bible is speaking about salvation. But in the new covenant, salvation comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's very important that we understand this fifth chapter of the book of Revelation that is talking about the one that is worthy to open up the books and to write our names in there because it is he that has brought forth deliverance, salvation, as because he was the Lamb of God that was slain. Verse 3 says, He has remembered his mercy and his truth towards the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Everyone has seen the salvation of our God. The new song is connected to salvation and redemption. This is why it was sung by the redeemed of the Lord, because of the great victory that our God has brought. Earth has seen the salvation of our God, and this is why they worshipped him. Worship for what Christ has done. The 24 elders is a representative of the church that was bowed before them. But as we read through here, the host of heaven rejoiced because of the redemption of mankind, and they joined in the angels with the chorus of the singers because they were worshiping the Lord God Almighty as they worshiped continually singing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. He is our King and our Savior, who is our God that has come to save us. Verse 10 says, And has made us unto our God. And notice he said he has made us. We're already kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth to fulfill his purpose. Do you know God has called you out to become a king and a priest for his own divine purpose? Yes, there was a priesthood in the Old Testament, but now Christ has brought forth a new priesthood, which is the church. And he's called us to be priests and to be kings or to reign. A king reigns and a priest teaches the ways of the Lord. And these are the people that God sends to you with the gospel because they understand the power of the redemption, the power of the blood, and what Christ has done. We also sing, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world to receive all glory and honor. Because he has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign upon the earth. The redeemed of the Lord is already a nation of kingly priests. If you go into the book of Peter, you can see what he calls us. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, separated unto God. And the new covenant is talking about the church. Yes, the church is compiled of Jews and Gentiles. It is neither a Jewish church or a Gentile church. The book of Romans teaches you that we are all one in Christ. It doesn't matter. Jew or Gentile, Greek, male or female, we're all one in Christ Jesus. Why? Because we have entered in to that covenant with our Lord. Now I want to go to verse 11. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, which means it was uncountable. All the angels of heaven joined in to sing the song of the redeemed. Now let's go to verse 12. And this is what they sang, as they said, with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb, and we know that is Jesus, that was slain, and we know Christ was slain, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. The angels were singing right along with the redeemed. 
So every time we come together to sing a new song to the Lord, all of heaven plays attention and they worship with us. Let's go now to verse 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth, such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And we know it is the one that is worthy to receive all glory and honor, our Lord Jesus Christ. And then all of us join in worship because our salvation has come through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has brought forth his kingdom, which he now rules and reigns over the earth. The enemy has been defeated at the cross at Calvary. That's why the cross is so important in every man's life because that is the main turning point in history where the Lord God regained, regained and gained back which legally belonged to him. But he did it by destroying the works of the enemy. So we know that the day will come where all knees will bow to Jesus Christ. So I want to go now to the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, which tells us that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Verse 10. Now let's go to verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So that everyone is going to bow at that name. In the Old Testament, it tells you the very same thing, that every knee will bow before God and confess. In closing, I want to go to verse 14. And the four beasts, beasts said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. And we, as the redeemed of the Lord, should do the very same thing. We should fall down and worship the one that has been slain from the foundation of the world, but is alive forevermore. And we should worship him and fall down before him, because he liveth forever and ever. And shortly we're going to be celebrating his resurrection, but the resurrection spirit is already in your heart. So you should be sharing the resurrection of Christ every day day you should be rejoicing if your name is written in the lamb's book of life you should rejoice because it is the lamb that has wrote it there who is our lord jesus christ who is the heir apparent of all things and he came to redeem us and that's why chapter 5 of revelation is a book of the new covenant that christ brought forth through his death and his resurrection I hope you were blessed by this study. To, church, to the church, I say the Lord bless you. Hopefully in a little while we'll be back together in the church celebrating again, having a great celebration of what the Lord has done, what he has delivered us from. We should never forget that the Lord Jesus Christ is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, and he is worthy to receive all honor, all power, all riches, all wisdom, strength and honor and glory and blessing. So may the Lord bless everyone that is listening to this study tonight. May the Lord be with you, shine his countenance upon you, give you peace and rest. Lord bless you. Amen.